And then, you know, she talked to me about TikiCon yeah. in Portland, and I went out and looked at it online, and I was looked at it, and I was, well, that look, looks like a lot of fun. And so... But well, what, what about it sparked your interest um, that you thought that would be fun? Well, I, I do like cultures. I like different okay. cultures. I've done a lot of traveling, and um, I like... Uh, and what what sparked my interest was I do like some of the retro uh, music and yeah. um, you know uh, vintage clothing and things like that and so I looked at that but mostly it just looked like a lot of fun people having a great time yeah. so when I looked at it online I thought wow I don't see anyone you know that looks angsty or grumpy or frustrated they just all look like they're having a blast. And then I'm reading the description of, you know, like the different yeah, things. Yeah, because they're all doing. drunk. You will, exactly. They're all drunk on my time. Exactly. Hi, everyone. This is Ray, or some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray. And today I am in Edmonds, Washington, which is north of Seattle. I am in Eric's shed, Tiki shed. The Edmonds Sneaky Tiki Lounge. I, I always have a lot of admiration for people that are actually building tiki bars in their place, or a tiki shed, or whatever. Well, I would say just the, the ones that I've seen, like when we went to TikiCon and did the, you know, the Portland bar tour yeah. uh, for two years, and then, uh, you know, Peter and Trista's place, yeah. and Tom Genie's, I mean, and Jeff and, and Sherry Nelson's, you see those tiki um, embellished either basements and bars and stuff in their houses, and it's amazing. It's very both intimidating, but it also is encouraging that you can take a like a 10 by 10 foot outdoor shed that I was gonna tear down, this 20 year old shed, and convert it into a space that's kind of fun to come out and have drinks and hang out with friends in. I think it's great, I, I mean, and fun is always to have the smaller location is better because I'm all, it's all about the full environment. Yeah. And it's all about having those walls covered. Yeah. So it's like less space to, to, to do that with. But before you started making your own tiki shed, you, you, you had a, a, a definitely a, a fascination with tiki mugs. That is very true. I don't even know if that's the correct word. Um, an obsession. Obsession, I think. Would an be obsession probably. with tiki mugs. And here's the thing: like you, how long have you been into tiki to begin with? Not a very long time. I would say like a year and a half. A year and a half. A year and a half. And then, like, how many tiki mugs do you have now? More than 10. More than 10. Less than 1,000. So, so you have 12 mugs. Yeah. So we're going to talk about your awesome <laughs> I, I, your awesome 12 mug tiki yeah, collection. It's, it's yeah, a lot. Um, three yeah, digits, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably between 350 and 500 mugs. 350 and 500 mugs. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of mugs. It is. So how? Why? How did this all start? How did this obsession start for you? Well, I mean, at the beginning... Uh, Let's go I to the beginning. Go to the beginning. Back okay. in the old days. Back in the old days, a year and a half ago. Yes. So it was 2016. <laughs> yeah. my, my girlfriend, Candace Ives, at the time, she um, was talking about the whole tiki sub pop culture and mm -hmm. how she'd been into it for a long time, and um, which piqued my interest. And, and at that point, you didn't know anything about it? I didn't even know. I thought it was like, what do you mean? You mean like the Talkie Tiki in Edmonds, which is a local <laughs> bar in Edmonds? And I was like, is that what you're talking about? And she said, no, that is not what I'm talking about. She said, believe me. I'm talking about the whole Believe me, Eric, that is not it, because yeah. I've been to that place. She said, it's, it's the whole Polynesian, Hawaiiana, and, you know, 1950s, 1960s retro. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I looked at her and I'm like, you mean that's a thing? And she said, oh, absolutely. And they have a conference for it. And, and there's this a and conference. there's that. And I just looked at her and I'm like, there is not a conference for, for tiki stuff. I picture a, yeah. a bunch of people around a round table. Yeah. All right, is this tiki? Yeah. No. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Candace had gone back out to Minneapolis um, before I, I'd gone out to and, and had been to these bars. Yeah. And she came back with the first uh, and, and gave me two mugs. Right. So my first two mugs Candace gave me. One was the Psychotic Susie mm -hmm. mug, which I love. I still drink out of it pretty frequently. And I'm trying to remember which of the other ones she gave me from. I don't remember what it's called. I don't know, remember what the drink is. But as they say, you know, the first taste is always free. <laughs> and that's, and that's kind of how it started. What really um, pulled me in deep on the Tiki mug side of it was seeing um, the actual, you know, like really seeing the artist's 
uh, and and the variations and the depth and the and the breadth of kind of that creative edge. Um, and th- my first introduction of that was when, was TikiCon. So actually, you went into TikiCon. You had two mugs in tow. Yeah. And then you go and then you meet like like Monk Tiki. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had picked up, you know, on Craigslist, I'd actually, you know, before we went to TikiCon, yeah. I had, I had purchased um, like a box of somebody's Tiki mugs and some little statues and stuff um, wow. uh, on off of Craigslist. Yeah. And I think I got maybe 25 mugs and um, maybe like 10 of the little you know, statues and carvings. And they were like, you know, that, what is it, Coco Joe's, yeah. the kind of black lava ones, and um, Harvey's, you know, there were, I think there were four or five different Harvey's, you know, tiki mugs. And I think yeah. I spent like, I don't know, 75 or 100 bucks on the whole box of stuff. Whereas, you know, once I got to Tiki Con, you know, I got a whole taste of something that was entirely different. Yeah, you see something from Mung Tiki, and it's like, it's like a piece of art. Tiki Con comes and goes, but that doesn't mean you're going to stop buying mugs. So now you right. start going online. Right. And so, you know, at TikiCon, you know, you get to talk to people yeah. and, um, you know, you, you connect with people on Facebook or Instagram yeah. and that kind of expands out. And then I, you know, I realized that the community of people that, you know, as an example, I would see someone post a picture of a Tiki mug yeah. and I would look at that and I'm like, I love that mug. Where did you get it? Yeah. And, and they would say, oh, well, Wendy Savola made that for me. Wendy Savola. And then I was just like, well, how do I get Wendy Savola to make a mug for me? And I, I remember. Like, get, they're like, get on the wish list. That's, that's what happened. I reached out to her and said, I see these mugs. I love them. And she said, well, my, my wish list, I'm already about three years booked out. And, and she said, I'm retired. And I was like, okay, you know. The, she is literally making those things in her house. Yes, I, I sculpting them in her like in her living room, like on the couch. Yep. While each, she's watching each one with loving care. Each yeah. one is individually done, and I, I play the long game. So I said, "Great, yeah. put me down on year four, whatever it was." But I said, "Do you ever run into a case where someone decides when it comes up time for a mug that they don't want it?" And she said, well, it comes up sometimes. I said, well, put me on the list for those. Yeah, give and, me one of those. And so that's actually what happened. So no about a week later, she contacts me and said, hey, by the way, um, we just finished up the Sacramento bar crawl, and I have extra mugs. Would you like one? Yeah. And I mean, I said, yes, why? And I bought that one. And then a while later, she came back and said, okay, well, somebody on the wish list you know, didn't want their mug. Are you interested? She asked other people, and so I said yes. And and so actually, uh, these wish lists have been coming out, like the missionaries dilemma, and a cup and a bowl that um, I have here that's similar to that. And she just finished a goblet, which is oh in that same God. genre. And she just I like I just got pictures or a uh, video and pictures of it um, today. And so I, what I found was that that community was very accessible. And I, I found myself reaching out to other mug makers, and I would, you know, do searches and find out, you know, I discovered Uga Muga. I mean, it's not like I discovered something that was, but from myself, yeah, it was U- a discovery. Uga Muga, well, explain to the, the so, audience what yeah, Uga Muga is. So Uga Muga is a, is a database yeah. uh, um, where people catalog and take pictures of their mug collections, and it's a mechanism uh, for people to identify mugs that they purchased, like, let's say, this one from um this is from the mahalo tiki yeah and it's a shrunken head and they've got a couple of styles of this and so if you wanted to find this it tells you things like how many they've made um it might tell you the artist that rendered it who did the production how many there were what variations there are and then people take pictures of them in their collection and then they basically develop a a database of their collection against this kind of database of known mugs yeah and and, um huma huma from Kritiki is the woman is, behind. Is the person behind Uga, that. Uga Muga. And so that that also helped me um, kind of. Expand you want to find out where all the tiki bars are in the country? Yeah. Go, Kritiki. go to Kritiki. You want to find out all about the tiki mugs in the country? Go, go to, to Uga, Uga Muga. Muga. And and you know that gives you a very good um, sightline to kind of what's out there. Yeah. Um, and there's also some aspect of um, sharing uh, um, the value or the or recent value sightings of mugs, maybe what they originally sold for, how many were made, uh, recent eBay sold uh, sightings or private sale sightings might be included to help identify for people how rare or desired they are and how much some of them are are being sold and bought for. The thing that I find crazy with 
the value of some of these new tiki mugs oh, yeah. are worth more. And they're going for more than some of the vintage mugs that are out Oh, ab- absolutely. That's the thing that killed me. Well, I think there's a couple of things. I think, um, as an example, some of the most common mugs are some of the older ones. So like the Harvey's mugs are, I think, the most commonly yeah. cited mugs. And, and, you know, it's not that they're not interesting from the perspective of the history of the evolution of the space. Yeah. But it's also, you know, one of the things for me personally, um, I... I like things that people make. Yeah. Um, it could be wine. It could be, you know, a small distillery whiskey. It could be a piece of jewelry. Yeah. I would always rather, and I'm more compelled and drawn towards things that are made by somebody, like you made it, or in, this, yeah. in the case of, you know, Wendy Savola, this person yeah. that I actually made a connection with. Oh, yeah. She made this, and it's and, and it's an artistic expression, and those are the things that are compelling to me. I love that. And I love people's interpretation of it and why they do it. And I'm also not hung up on if it's tiki or not. My definition is super simple. If I like it and I put a Mai Tai, a big jug, or a little bit of Mai Tai or a tiki drink in it, it is a tiki <laughs> mug as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Because, you know, like here we go. How about this one? This one is from uh, Shima Mechanic or Shima Ceramics. What? The and hell? it is um, it is the Gorgon from uh, or the Demi Gorgon from Stranger Things, the Netflix show. And so, um, I mean, it's amazing. There's absolutely nothing tiki about this. I mean, this isn't a tiki fourteen out of hundred. Yeah, yeah. And so um, this came up, and it's I mean the wow. the the details on it, the different you know. Um, just on the outside of it and and the just the design the glaze everything is just amazing about it and wow. I mean and it's you know I mean what makes it a tiki mug and so I know there's a lot of stuff going on and I see it online no, and I yeah. just ignore it I don't care it's cool it's cool art people who make them call them tiki mugs I drink tiki drinks out of them that makes them a tiki mug yeah there, well there's the whole thing it's like yeah. you know well or how about this? The Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Yeah. You know, I love this from Tiki Diablo. Um, I mean, oh, it's like kind of cool. like a coconut. And it's, yeah, it is. And it's just like a Boba Fett. I was like, this is awesome. I love Star yeah. Wars. And, well, I love Tiki. And I love Tiki mugs. And then, you know, the other thing for me, um, which may be a little different than other collectors, okay. is I'll drink out of every mug. Really? Oh, yeah. If I'm not going to drink out of it, I won't buy it. Wow, I'm going to drink out of every mug. And of these up here, there's two I haven't had drinks out of, and it's only because they're new. I mean, new to me. Yeah. And they're all going to have a tiki drink in it. How do you get a drink out of that one? Like this. It's awesome. <laughs> this is, so you hold the hand. Right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a zombie hand holding a tiki box. I love it. Uh, this is, like, actually one of my favorites. <laughs> it's from Mung Tiki. So you hold his hand, and then you drink out of it. It's weird. The harder ones are some of the ones from, um, I think it's like, uh, what is it, Ge- Gecko, like there's a, um, it's, it's like. Or, no, it is, can you, can you detach it from them? No, 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 it's glazed onto it. Are you serious? Oh yeah, it's attached, it's glazed on. Oh my God. Yeah. That is insane. It's, this one's, yeah, this one's a lot of fun. Um, I've got some other ones where like the, the tentacle, the octopus tentacle, or the tentacle from Vantiki. It's you. It's almost like a horn, so it sits like this. But when you turn it up, that's when you fill it. And there's no way to set it down because it it, it can't sit on anything. Um, and then some fashion of these, before function. Yes, and then some of these like. Oh, Dude, that's be careful. A, that's a big ass mug. Yeah, this is a zombie head for Monk Tiki, and I think I want to say this is from 2002, 2012, and it's they had this whole series that was uh, magnets. And so you have all these parts you can interchange between different heads. There are these zombie heads. This one's the alien zombie. Dude, hold on. Keep hold on to that. Yeah. So here, grab the grab your Harvey's mug. Harvey's mug. Oh, this one. So. Yeah. Here's the difference. Yeah. We we've we've come we've come a long way. Yeah. And and it's funny. I mean, the original idea of like a tiki mug. Back in the day, back in like the 50s or the 60s. This is a souvenir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, here's a little souvenir to take home you from, get your, it for free. from your visit to wherever. Yeah, or for a few bucks extra, you few get the bu- mug. A few bucks extra, you get the mug. Well, yeah. it, but this, this is this is beyond this. This is art. Yeah. 
And I think, and even some of the older ones are R2, but I think they're just, the difference is being, is mass produced versus, you know, the amount of energy and time taken to make one of these is, is significant. And they might make 25 or 100, um, or they might make two or 300, but they'll, they'll leverage the same mold and, and they'll make different variations on it and different additions and glazes. And so it, in its of itself, it creates kind of a collection or a collecting kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Monk Tiki has a series of glazed skulls. And they did 25 of each, um, or maybe, yeah, I think it was 25 or 50, maybe. But I think it was 25 of each, and there's, that's, you know, like there's pink, a, that's not a whole, there's purple, a lot. there's green, there's uh, some crazy ones that look like Wolfman and... Oh my God. Um, Pumpkins, and I've been trying to collect those. I've got maybe eight or nine of them, and I just wait until I see one that's rational in in price, um, and I pick it up. Well, I'll tell you what, you you hooked me up with a tiki bot. Yep. yep. That I'm eternally grateful for, and I love that mug. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And I, I and and the crazy thing is, it's an older mug. It's more mm -hmm. of a vintage mug, but it's like, but it it, it feels. Really good in your hand. Yeah. It's actually big. It's a big mug. It is, yeah. And um, it's really, really weird how like certain old mugs are worth something and other ones aren't. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think it just like you know like the tiki those old tiki bob mugs are very iconic. Yeah. Right. And I mean, um, I know they stand that, out. Yeah, they do. And 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 also, if you think about how many variations people have built beyond that that iconography of. Tiki Bob. Yeah. So like even this one. And there's all kinds of Bob variations. Oh, yeah. You know, um, Wendy Cibola and oh, Wendy Bob Tiki. Is, and yeah. I mean, the, all, most of the most of the big mug makers at one time or another have, have paid homage to the Tiki Bob in some form or another. Yeah. And I've collected quite a few of those. Did you think, well, you said like a year and a half ago that you that you'd be down this this rabbit hole this far. No, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I couldn't even imagine it even after I I left TikiCon with 13 mugs. I didn't realize how cuz I think that was the thing that really opened it up for me. I realized, wow, yeah. there's this huge realm. And then I got to talking to people and then I got to talking to different makers. And then I was looking out on eBay and I was looking out yeah. on Ugamuga and I'm realizing, wow, this is crazy and these mugs are so expensive. I can't spend 4 or 500 dollars or 300 dollars on a mug. That's too much. And, and then I started noticing, oh, if I pay attention to the different, you know, Instagram and Facebooks, I can identify when, um, you know, when the mug makers are releasing and I can buy a mug yeah. sometimes when they're released. We're at a point in time where you can like, um, you can have a personal relationship with the actual mug makers. Right. Which I love. I love. I, 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 so I you could literally say to them, hey, when that new mug comes out, I want one. Yeah. I, 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 I honestly think, Eric, I've said this before. We're in the third wave of tiki right now, but I consider this to be the golden age of tiki because this was not going on back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s where you had all these mug makers making essentially art. Yeah. Where you, and then we have the internet. Yeah. Where you can actually reach out to these people and get in contact with them. Oh, yeah. Um, like even like air travel's cheap. You're talking about flying down to Sacramento to go... Yeah. To go see Wendy, yeah. you can do it. It's not not a big deal. Yeah, and the and, and I think you're spot on in the sense of you know as I started discovering you know um, there's uh, Cook Ceramics there in in Belfast, Ireland. Yeah, um, I've purchased a variety of their mugs. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, Buy Tiki in France. Yeah, um, there's a couple tiki makers in London. Cheeky Tiki. I went out when I was uh, yeah. out there this summer. I, I had an opportunity to stop by their offices. Beautiful offices. They make some great mugs. Um, there's a, um, a mug maker in, I can't remember, I don't think it's Kazakhstan, but it's, it's Eastern, um, Eastern Europe. Wow. And, um, and he makes an amazing Cthulhu mug that I've got a couple of versions of. Um, there's also a kind of a, a tiki mug maker out in Greece. Um, uh, wood, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but you know that you're you're really correct in the sense of it isn't just like a West Coast, California, yeah. Hawaii, um, you know anywhere where somebody's making mugs. And then there's also all the mugs now that are starting to be built around or that have continued to be built around um, the different tiki bars around the world. Yeah. And and that's another place where you know the tiki mugs for the bar don't look like this now. Some of them do, but most of them don't. And, and they get uh, um, 
more embellished. They they make you know like okay it's like Frankie's Tiki Rooms you know tenth anniversary oh, mug man. and you know they'll make a hundred of them or two hundred and fifty and you can't get it unless you go. Yeah. And like I I couldn't ever go because I didn't even know it existed. And so if I want mugs like that, I have to go seek them out yeah. and either trade or buy them from other collectors, um, which is how I've picked up quite a few of these. Yeah. Um, or I buy them from the the maker as they come out. I'm, I'm very good at pressing the key, saying, buy now, buy now, you know. Um, or in some cases, they'll make uh, a one-off glaze. Yeah. Um, I've reached out to, you know, Gecko or some other mug maker and said, hey, I really like this particular one, um, you know. And sometimes they'll release them on eBay, and they're still very yeah. reasonably priced because they're, you know. Yeah. I think the only thing I, 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 get, I wrestle with is... Um, where people get online, they're they're selling a hundred. Someone will buy three, and you see them up on eBay the next day for three times what they paid. And I think so, what bugs me about that is that it it would be one thing if I knew that money was going to the person who made the mug. You know, if it went to Van Tiki, if it went to Monk Tiki, or someone who's taken the time to create this thing versus the person who stood in line and punched the button three times. Yeah. Um, and because anytime there's more demand than there are, you know, inventory, you're going to create yeah. Um, a, a value, this a representative is, value there. This is my plan, Eric. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait another like 15 years. Yeah. And then when Tiki dies out again, I'm gonna then, I'm just, them all. then I'm just going to buy them all out of the for three bucks for a piece. three bucks at the at the uh, yeah at the, uh, at the Goodwill. Yeah, maybe we might. Who knows? Oh, I, I think, will. I don't. Yes, you will. You wait for that, Ray. I that's think that a, I think that's totally. Yeah, gonna that's going to happen, or I'm going to die. That's what I'm gonna do. Seriously, give it ten years. I'm gonna buy all that shit cheap. I'm that's gonna not, find that mug for sale that's, that's at not, Value Village that, for four that's bucks. That's not gonna happen because I'm gonna totally commoditize this thing. <laughs> You're gonna beat me to all this. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the values high. Right. I'm gonna keep this thing going. Hmm. Single-handed. This is no. This this is my mini game. <laughs> no, it's just like the whole idea of like I started looking at the the whole construct, the economic of scarcity, right? And so, you're planning all this stuff. Out. No, not about tiki. It's just in general. It's just it's the same rule for any type of collection of something. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's just, but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I love it. The excuse I use with my daughter when she starts mocking me for it, it says, "Hey, you know what? If I ever do want to sell these, I'll make money on them. It, it, don't worry this about is, it." And she just rolls her eyes and this goes, is your "Okay, Dad." This is your future tuition. That well, that's what, well, I already told her. I said, "Look, you look. There are two choices here." Because she's in, she just this is her first year up at college, yeah. and I said, you know, Dad's covering you, and I said, I I had to make a really hard decision, and she said about what, and I said, well, it was either going to be hookers and blow, or it was going to be tiki mugs, and the tiki mug obsession keeps <laughs> me in line with the hookers and blow is a bottomless pit, what? and you wouldn't go to college. She looks at me and she says, that's not a real thing, and I, my response was, oh, it is, and it's a real burden every day. The struggle is real. <laughs> yeah, it the horse. struggle is real. Hey gang, this is Tiki with Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more episodes, click on the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in the uh, the comment section below.